Thank you, uh, Alex, and uh, thank you, Michael. Good to see you again. And uh, we agree on uh, most of the uh, issues that we uh, discussed here because we were working together on the issues in the past. Uh, however, uh, on certain issues, we uh, look at them from uh, different perspectives. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the process of uh, or efforts to uh, for negotiation with the insurgents. I'm not going to use the word Taliban because it's not only Taliban, there's the insurgents. Afghanistan actually faces an insurgents, uh, insurgency, an insurgency environment, not only one faction, the Taliban. And as uh, Michael said, uh, you, need, you call all these insurgents Taliban, why they are not? So uh, the, uh, the hallmark of uh, the uh, failed efforts in the past seven years uh, actually to two points. One is the missed opportunities and second failure to integrate the uh, negotiation or reconciliation in the context of an overall counterinsurgency strategy because there was no counterinsurgency strategy in Afghanistan in the past eight years. So all what we see, uh, we have seen in the past seven or eight years were either fragmented, rhetoric, and uh, at the same time, uh, not uh, you know transparent, and uh, not effective. So therefore, I think uh, uh, if we look at three stages, as Michael also referred to it, uh, was born and after born, and then uh, the, uh, the, the the way that uh, uh, some efforts, fragmented efforts, uh, took place. I will come back to this. But if you look at the Afghan psyches, uh, uh, Michael in his book uh, referred to it, that there's a potential for reconciliation in, 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 in Pashtun society. And however, I think there's one thing that I want to uh, stress that the kind of potential is, is uh, more for peace rather than for reconciliation. Because, and uh, Pashtuns actually living in a very uh, difficult environment uh, face so many uh, difficult times, they want to prefer to delay the final decision. <coughs> that's why when he refers to Tigger or uh, moratorium on things, that's because they, well, they, they, okay, we will stop here, we'll wait for final decision. That is the, 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 the thing. And this affects the whole uh, you know, <coughs> process of reconciliation in Afghanistan or the Pashtun societies. In, in the 70s, I, was, uh, the, I went to Paktia the, the, from uh, the, the, of the government to resolve or to, uh, to dispute between two tribes, judges in Mangal, over uh, the rights of, uh, of um, logging in a mountain. And I realized that there are 70 issues not for the, 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 you know, uh, resolved. They were all tigers or all these uh, moratoriums, truths. Uh, in some cases, the government wanted that uh, to not to uh, resolve issues. But now, today, the same way. Those who are in Helmand or in Kandahar or in Farah, they are not going to uh, make a commitment unless they say, okay, that's the only way. They will, they will talk to you, and that, that therefore, I think Afghanistan missed two opportunities for a grand deal. One was at Bonn. As Michael uh, said that uh, uh, it failed to uh, address the, uh, uh, the uh, causes of war and also to include all parties. That's one, uh, because at that time, all Taliban were terrorists, all Taliban were uh, linked to, to Al-Qaeda, or that was the perception, so mm, yeah. uh, neither the international, the, the, the international community nor the, the, the Northern Alliance was willing to, to uh, include. Although at that time, 85% of Taliban were ready to uh, join the political process, renounce violence, and including the leadership, some of the major leadership that I know. The second opportunity was missed in 2002, 2003. That was the time that Taliban finally decided what to do. They, they, they tried their strategy in Karachi in 2002, I think. Uh, and then finally decided, okay, we are not uh, ready to wage a, a, a conflict, on conflict. And there are so many problems in Afghanistan to, uh, you know, to negotiate with the government. So they actually created two teams. One was to look after the possibility of fighting. The other one, to talk to the government. That was the time that they were uh, coming to us. They came to me, contacted me, contacted Minister uh, of Defense, Fahim, 
uh, contacted President uh, uh, Karzai. And all they wanted was a guarantee for, for, for their protection. And uh, in my conversation with them, I said, OK, well, I will protect you as a minister of interior. He said, no, you are not the only person in Afghanistan. There are several centers of power in Afghanistan. You are uh, here in the Ministry of Interior, yes. And then uh, Minister of Defense has, has, has its own agenda, Fayyum Khan. Uh, the uh, uh, intelligence chief, Arif Khan, was, has, has his own network. Uh, U.S. has own network, coalition forces, ISAF, intelligence agencies of these countries. If you can find a way, a mechanism that can guarantee the protection with why all these actors will, will be involved, then we will uh, be assured that we, but we were unable to, to uh, create that kind of a mechanism. Because on the, uh, the blacklist the issue, there was, they never reached an agreement. Who should be on the blacklist and the rest are fine. So after that, whatever reconciliation or uh, the uh, contract was made was on an individual basis. Yes, 12 people uh, of, of 42 of the uh, UN list were reconciled, but they were, they, they just individuals they came back. It did not affect the, 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 the uh, situation on the field. And uh, at the same time, there's always one question, whether the insurgency, uh, or the, uh, uh, the, the instability is caused by insurgency, or insurgency is caused by uh, an unstable environment. Failure of the government, failure of the international community, mistreatment of people. In, in many cases, that, that the three wars that was going, counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency, and state building, they sometimes work at cross-purposes. What was done in the interest of counter-terrorism, it actually alienated people and caused resentment that is bad for, for uh, winning hearts and minds, which is the key to, uh, to, to win insurgency. What was uh, you know, uh, being done for counter-insurgency actually was not good for uh, uh, State building because some very un, uh, you know uh, people with questionable past were uh, co-opted in, in, in state building. They were not interested in in in, in, a, in, a, in a stable state. Uh, Michael referred to the uh, the uh, 2002, and I have an uh, experience in 2003 when two militia corps were fighting with tanks and and and, and, and artillery in the north. And I was there two months and to stop that war and then to disengage them and to collect the heavy weapons because the, the, the civilians were, 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 were losing their lives. And there were thugs who were waiting how to, when to loot Mazar Sharif uh, in, in, in October 2003. And then the international community was looking at the side. It was green on green, as they said. And uh, so all these created that environment. Now, uh, the, any, in any negotiation, I think unless you create the strategic context for it, it will be fragmented. It will be ineffective. Yes, I agree with, with uh, Michael that uh, the uh, small reconciliation, even small, they, 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 they actually will help. I, I don't agree that it will help all the time. Because so if you can sustain them, it will help. Otherwise, if you cannot sustain them, this will discourage others from, from doing the same kind of a deal. Look at Musaqala, what happened, Mullah Salam and Musaqala. Yes, at the beginning, yes, that, was a, that, was, that was a very attractive deal. That's, uh, Mullah Salam, a commander with the Taliban, with the so-called Taliban, he came to the side of the government, he took over in Musaqala with his men, and uh, there were so many VIP visits there, <laughs> and, and, and to, to, to praise them and to uh, brag about it. But what happened today, the last time Mullah Salam talked to me about uh, a month ago, before he went to India, for, that was, uh, he said, nobody even can protect my family in Kajaki. I had to go myself there to Kajaki to protect my family. And what is the difference of Mullah Salam today, who is meaning only a post in the Musakala, the building of the district administration, in another government uh, district administrator who is in Nadi Ali or in, in, uh, in Gerashk, uh, that he's only confined to that building. Actually, this discouraged many others from making the same deal. Uh, now, uh, suppose that the uh, 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 I mean, uh, Taliban commander in uh, Helmand today said, okay, I will go to the side of the government. 
What are you going to do with these men? And uh, can you can you find them a job? Can can you integrate them into the armed forces? I think there is one uh, uh, bad experience that Michael knows with the with the Gresh that uh, the um, there was a there was an idea that uh, get the uh, the uh, men of Bula Salam and put them in the kamarband in the. Uh, security built of Gresh, if, if I remember uh, correctly, you correct me, uh, Michael. And then uh, this was pursued as a, as a conspiracy, the government, suspicions, which as you had very, very uh, um, uh, present consequences. So what, therefore, there is no plan. You know, unless you have a major plan and you uh, integrate it into the overall counterinsurgency uh, strategy, it is not going to work. Because uh, the, uh, all rebellions in Afghanistan had one <coughs> common strategy to outlast the other side. As long as that, that tendency is there, as long as there are cries around the world that we are going to lose in Afghanistan, why they should, they, they, they will come. There are, there, there, there's been many reports about these uh, you know, negotiation in Saudi Arabia and others. I have spoken with many of those people who were involved. They said there was nothing substantive in it. Unless you change the environment, it will be very difficult to reach a kind of a, an agreement that will not create more problems in the, in, in, in the future. So therefore, uh, there are three uh, points that we have to take into account. First, for uh, reconciliation, I mean sustainable reconciliation, not tactical deals. There should be an incentive for negotiation. But both sides should realize that they can get something in the true negotiation that they cannot get through fighting. The second is the who as who can deliver this negotiation. Uh, as that said, Mujahidi has uh, reconciled six thousand people, but no, no, it, it made no difference on the field. And uh, so you have to find who can deliver uh, the, the, uh, the when you negotiate with them. And uh, finally, what costs are acceptable? There are some costs you pay, but the opportunity costs higher which uh, after you make a deal, maybe there will be, uh, th that will spawn more problems. <coughs> if the negotiation reaches that, uh, uh, you know, aims at turning the clock back to 2001 or 2000, or 2000, I think it is going to be the source of more problems in Afghanistan. Afghans are not going to go back to 2000, no, not going to back to 2001. Uh, so therefore, I think you have to be, what costs are acceptable to, to, to both sides. So therefore, I, uh, I will stop here. Uh, but uh, I uh, just what the last point is that the time for a grand deal is gone. It is very difficult because there's no one group. There is no possibility unless Afghanistan, Pakistan, all can, can work together. So it has to be uh, local deal. But local deals that eventually will make the top uh, leadership irrelevant. And that is possible only if the country stabilizes the country, when the people, then it will make the good. Eventually, I think to defeat the insurgency in Afghanistan is to make it irrelevant, not to kill the, the, the fighters. Thank you very much.